I've got a question. Do you miss that old style of cruising and the glamour that came along with it back in the days of yesteryear? Want to re-experience it? Stay tuned as we do a review of Canard. <laughs> Joining me today to review the classic cruise line Canard are Rich and Linda Skinner, owners of Cruise Holidays of Woodenville, based in Kirkland, Washington. Rich and Linda have been meeting the needs of their clients in and around Washington and across the country for 20 plus years. Hi, folks. Welcome back to RTE Travel Talk. Hi, Ken. Good Hi, to Ken. see you. Great to have you back with us. So listen, you guys know that I'm a big fan of cruising, but probably what you didn't know is I'm an even bigger fan of cruising old style. Back in the day when it was perhaps a little bit more glamorous, mm -hmm. we both know that the industry's changed quite a bit in the last 20 years, but there's still one Much you know, more there's still one cruise line out there that's trying to adhere to the all saw with perhaps a slightly more modern take on it. And that line mm -hmm. is Canard. Now, I happen to know that you folks just recently came off a short voyage on Canard on the Queen Elizabeth in what they call the Queen's Grill Suite. I'm just dying Correct. to hear all about... Correct this classic ship and canard so how does that sound okay let's get started perfect it began its life in 1840 and it was founded by a very clever canadian businessman from halifax who got a contract with the british government to provide mail services along the atlantic coast in canada uh, and then he was able to parlay that into a transatlantic mail contract to take mail from great britain to United States and Canada. And so uh, that was the founding and start of, of Cunard and where they really got their, uh, their, their feet wet, so to speak. At some point along yeah. the line there in their history, did, did they not buy the White Star Line? Yes, they did. Yeah. And the White Star Line was having a lot of troubles. And so they bought it. Well, they actually merged it first, according to what I read. They merged it first and it was the Cunard White Star right. Line. And and then um, White Star literally sold right. out to them. And the, and the famous part of White Star obviously was one the Lusitania, which was torpedoed and sunk yep. in nineteen fifteen, and the other one, of course, was the Titanic. Right. A really fascinating history. So, what are they yeah. like today, folks? You know, when we think about Canard and, and their ships, what 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 can folks expect? For me, I when you talk about the old class classic kind of right. ship. It has that just richness and, and feel of that classic ship, and yet it has all the modern, all the modern amenities. Uh, you know, a gorgeous spa, gor you know, really nice gym, uh, pools, beautiful pools, and jacuzzis, and then, you know, a sports area with croquet, of course, and pickleball, of course, and uh, lawn bowling, and just um, a wide variety of various activities to do. They have just this combination. You won't find any uh, pool slides or anything like that. It's, it's the classic cruise with delicious food, beautiful areas to lounge in, and just very, very beautiful. Great entertainment of all sorts. I don't know any other ship that has a two-story library. Uh, this has a two-story library with a circular staircase in the middle to get up and down right. with, I don't know how many thousands of books in there with, I mean, not just novels, but other books that you might even do research while you're traveling. I noticed that they had a puzzle room. They're really conducive to long voyages. We were only on there three days and we had a great time. So short voyages can work too. <laughs> Ken, I'd, I'd say the best way to describe it is it feels like a private club. Right. So if you it were does. to go to England yeah. and you walked into a really top end private club with all the dark paneling and the muted carpets and the, mm -hmm. and the butlers and the waiters with the towels folded across their arm and all of the things you'd expect to there, they right. have. So it really fits with all that heritage. So the showroom is beautiful and elegant. Every piece of it just feels right. elegant. One thing when when I first started cruising years ago, and I and I just loved it. It was on a premium line. Our first our first cruise was on Celebrity, and it was seven nights. Yeah. And of those seven nights, there was two formal nights, and there was I think probably two like kind of semi formal nights. So you basically dressed mm -hmm. for dinner. 
and you went you went you yeah. went down you went down and you had just impeccable service from your wait staff and everything was just so and i loved that and the, the cruise lines of yeah. I, a lot of the premium and contemporary cruise lines have got, kind of gotten away from that over the year it's because people are not really mm-hmm. looking for it but i i particularly loved it do you find that yes. kind of style on canard you know on steroids yeah. The service is spot on every place you go. And so, you know, we were in the Queen's Grill. The whole level of it is kind of that old style cruising. Right on. Well, that sounds wonderful. Tell me about this class system. Like, you know, when people hear the word Queen's Grill, the first thing the first thing that comes to mind is a restaurant, but that's not really what this is about, is it? No. Not totally, but that's how okay. it started. Well, why, don't, why don't you give us the history on that and explain the Explain how this class Rich system works in Canard. I'm going to let Rich do that. Well, you know, there was a, a, a German ship called the Deutschland yes. back in the early part of the 20th century. And it, they were the first ones to have a grill, which was a place where they were going to do meats and stuff, primarily. A specialty restaurant in today's vernacular. <laughs> kind of, but it was kind of, they just said, well, here's a nice place. We can grill meat here outside and we can do all those things. So that kind of evolved into specialty restaurants. But for Cunard, they wanted to have a differentiation to talk about what their suite level passengers right. get, what their mini suite level passengers get, and what the normal class, uh, club class, I guess you call it, uh, customers get as well. And so uh, what they did is they, they put into place, and they're the only ones I know of that have really have a four class system. Uh, as far as the ship right. is concerned. Queen's Grill is only for suite passengers. No one else is allowed in there. You have your own private table, your own waiter, uh, you know, uh, everything. You can eat any time you want within you know, the dinner yeah, hours. Any time you, you want. have your table that's waiting for you. Right, you private lounge and outdoor area as well. That's only on one deck that you can only get to by putting your key into the elevator and getting there. So it's very elite as far as that's concerned. But even though it's very elite, we found that people, although they probably dressed a little better, were very nice, very congenial, and uh, you, you didn't get the friendly. The, the got feel, to know everybody the, around us. And feeling that uh, it was uh, snobby by right. any means, it was really more people who appreciated better things. Right. There are really four different levels of suites on board that ship. It's then the Princess Grill is for the mini suite customers. They wanted to give them something special. Uh, and I think probably the food is very similar to the Queen's Grill because it looked it looked like it was just a little bit maybe right. larger, and because the Queen's Grill is very intimate, you know, it's it's like you're coming into a a really top notch smaller restaurant. It's much smaller, intimate kind of dining than a large dining room that you find on on most ships. So if I understand this correctly, the Queen's Grill is a restaurant which is available only to the sweet guests and that's really the name of the restaurant the queen's grill is just basically how canard identifies yeah. their sweet guests yes. right mm-hmm. and then the princess grill is the same thing except that it's how canard identifies their mini sweet guests yes and then they actually have the, the, main, the main dining was called the britannia right. and the- britannia but- but you had a separate dining room if you were in that next category of the main dining, Which a smaller, not club. not small. So they have yeah, the club, club class. designation, and that's for more of the select uh, balconies. So that is just veranda state rooms that you can get that are in the what you would call the club class. So for other folks that would experience other cruise lines, what about specialty restaurants? Do they have like specialty restaurants or is these restaurants that we're all talking about here? Oh, they, they do. do. They do. So over, mm-hmm. over and above mm-hmm. what we've just talked about, there's still also the opportunity for specialty dining. Yeah, there was, I believe there were two specialty restaurants on this particular cruise. So you're you're in a Queen's Grill suite. What are, what other amenities and privileges come along with that? It was a really, really beautiful suite. You know, I just walked in and I was like, whoa, I'm spoiled forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but uh, it has, it has a mini bar that is totally 
right. included. You just, you know, you have everything that's that's there. And of course, they bring canopies for you. And there was a nice bottle of actual champagne waiting for us when we arrived. And they have fresh fruit, they have fresh flowers, all of those kinds of things. You have a butler and an assistant oh. butler. The butler is really the person who kind of watches after you. And the assistant butler is the guy that does all the work. <laughs> <laughs> but he was always checking on us. If you had any questions, you didn't have to go call front desk or do anything like that. He was there and always seemed to be right. around. Um, and you could find out from from him what what your question is. And he, he seemed to be extremely knowledgeable about everything on the ship. So you were on board the Queen Elizabeth. What are, and I know there's the Queen Mary. What other ships do they have? They just have three ships right. this year and they're adding a new one next okay, year. So, we, so you have the Queen Mary, the Queen Elizabeth and the Queen Victoria, yep. and they are adding the Queen Anne. Okay. All right. In, in comparison to some of the other ones, are they large ships, folks? No, they're medium-sized ships. Okay. Yeah. The uh, Queen Anne will be ninety-three thousand tons, right. so you can, and with about three thousand passengers, the Queen uh, Elizabeth was not quite twenty-one hundred. So I consider it a medium-sized ship in the days. World. Exactly. The ship is is large. It's just that the uh, rooms are just a little bit larger, no matter what room category you're looking at. Rich, you mentioned earlier that. Their history is transatlantic crossings. Do they still do transatlantic yes. crossings? Work, work. Yes. They do. They still do the traditional transatlantic crossing. The Queen Mary is the one that does the transatlantic crossings. And I, it, I mean, on a normal base, on a regular basis, it has. It's to from Southampton to New York, and it's the only ship that I know of that has onboard kennels, and it really brings the word poop deck into play <laughs> in a real sense. <laughs> uh, it 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 uh, it allows you to bring your Pets, of course, if you wish to bring them with you. So yeah. on a transatlantic, you'd get on in Southampton and just get off in New York? That's right. No mm -hmm. stops. Wow. So the whole experience the, the whole experience then on a transatlantic is the, the level of service and all the things that go along with it while you're yeah. while you're on board. Well, what happened was initially when the 707 came along, that ended transatlantic yes. steamers. Yep. And so they had to figure out, well, if we can't offer that, then what are we going to offer instead? And so I think the new concept was a lot of onboard opportunities to do things in a resort manner yeah. that you couldn't do any other way. So by having Oxford Dons do lectures or video things, by having mm -hmm. a planetarium on board that ship, that by having a huge, the biggest I've ever seen dance floor, of any ship because ballroom dancing is very important for for people who are Britophiles and the people who were on board our ship it looked like dancing with the stars tryouts it was it was that was one of the things the lectures we we they had fun lectures like they had the guy who uh, one of the writers of the Simpsons all right and he, yeah, yeah. He and he, he lectured twice, yeah. actually. And and his was just like a comedy yeah. routine. You know, he it was very funny. It, it was entertaining and informational, both. Everything that we saw was very well attended. But and and, what was unusual is Lynn and I stumbled upon this when we were wandering around the ship. They even had a community sing opportunity in one of the rooms. Yeah. 50, 60 people in there with a choir director teaching them how to sing and they were singing along. I said, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. Oh, they were having like a choir practice there. <laughs> wow, wow, like it's just. But it was just people who wanted to come in and sing and they were singing some show tunes and stuff like that. You know, there was just some very unique and, things, and you know, that. You I had. think you mentioned earlier, I think you were, you started to go where part of the entertainment was watching some of these folks on the ballroom floor. Just your fellow oh, passengers. Yes. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Ken. They they were like dancing with the stars caliber of dancing. You would think, okay, was this all old people? No. There were there were young, I mean, we're talking 20 year olds out there doing this ballroom dancing and just floating around the floor. And I mean, there were people were sitting pulling up their bar 
chairs from out of the bars around the glass railing. Just to watch. To watch, and, yeah. And they had a, was, about a 15-piece live orchestra playing for the music. Yeah. And singer. And, and it was, oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it was really something <laughs> to watch. Well, that 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 not, would, that would I, certainly be for me because I'd have to watch because I got like two left feet. And then at one time, also, we went around the corner, and here was a young girl who was standing. This is in one of the center courts, and lots of marble and stuff like that. And she was doing a, a ballet performance that was absolutely spectacular. And what was really cute is one family had a little girl with them, the little girl, and the little girl got out there and started dancing with her. And three or four and... years old. <laughs> oh, well, marvelous. So that actually leads me to another question. Like we talked about some really top caliber entertainment and stuff that's a little different. You mentioned earlier, we, you, there's no water slides. There's no, none of this really fancy resort there's, style there's nothing... stuff that you would expect on some of the other shows. What? Bumper car, yeah, no bumper cars. <laughs> what type of demographic do you find on board? Is this is is this a cruise line that would be good for families and kids, or do you think that perhaps they need to be older? I don't think it's an age situation with this. I think it's a preference situation. Okay. In other words, if you're the kind of family that likes to do all the little what would be the the bumper cars and the you know. If, if that's your idea of a vacation, then that's it's probably not the demographic for you. But if you are a family that reads together and you know, likes to go to museums and, and concerts and they had things for kids, but it just wasn't that. It's more what your preference of what you want to do on your vacation is. I, and, and Ken, I would add, I think it's definitely slanted to a Britophile group. If you like things British, UK stuff, you're going to really love it because it fits, everything fits right into that category. And they High become, tea, every day yeah. there's a high tea Formal. that is very yeah. high tea. <laughs> I would gather then when you're selling this product, it comes down to a good, solid conversation with the people that you're yes. looking to put on board, what they expect out of their cruise vacation, because it, yeah. this is not going to, yeah. this is not going to be for everybody, but for the people that want it, they're going to be wowed. Mm -hmm. It's not inexpensive. I would classify it as the luxury level pricing uh, for what they have, but at the same time, it is so unique right. that I can't think of anything that matches right. it for people who have those specific preferences. So in terms of pricing and and the level of service, Rich, it leans more, more towards luxury than it does premium. Yeah, I, I'd say it does. I'd say it's kind of like uh, in between, say, Regent and and Oceania, perhaps, maybe as it's, it's, it's one way to kind of slot it in right. there. Well, I think, I think you know, just look, when I was looking at the pricing, if you're in the, if you're in the suite class, definitely, you're talking totally luxury. The pricing is luxury. The quality is totally luxury. I think if you're down into the club class or the inside ocean view, standard balcony, that those are probably more in your premium class pricing right. category. You know, for yeah. folks like Deb and I that, you know, we're just on the borderline between premium and luxury. You could, you're still going to have a good experience, even if we went with some of the premium level staterooms yeah. on board. Yep. yep. I mean, all of the entertainment that we're talking about, that was, that's everybody's right. getting that. The thing that the suite gives you is, of course, a, a very luxurious right. room, probably a little bit higher level of service as they're taking care of you in that room, but not hugely, you know, you're going to get probably better service in your room than you do on a normal kind of a cruise, even in the other calibers, because they have more staff per person. The service level is going to be good no matter where yeah, you go. Yeah. So what type of traveler do you think <laughs> would benefit from booking a Queen's Girl suite? On Canard. Well, you know, I, I would think the typical passenger might be somebody who might want to buy a Land Rover car, might want to do a Jaguar, uh, likes things that are British, enjoys that feel of stuff, maybe even likes to go to uh, more iconic properties in, in North America and, and enjoys that feeling, enjoys that ambiance okay. and style okay. uh, because they're going to get that. I mean, it's going to deliver and, and that's very important for them. They want it unobtrusive, but they want it there. The key thing is over deliver and under promise. Right on. Right, right on. 
very good at that. I think if you like the arts and you like luxury and you go to the five-star hotels and the five-star restaurants, and that is the caliber you want, and you enjoy the the old style formalities that that you can get there, I think those people would really appreciate it. And and I think a lot of people would like to sample it. We like to watch Acorn and Brit Box and yes. you know, As <laughs> those. You know, my sister in law is British, so you know we we <laughs> we're we're kind of into that, you know. So that. For us, for us, it was just, we just love that part of it. And it's a very international, at least on the cruise we were on, very international group. So you meet a wide cruise. variety of people know, we, as, as well. If you like being in an international crowd and having, you know, that that cultural exchange, then that's another In good other reason. words, if you enjoy the finer things in life, you like meeting people from around the world, this is a this is a good option. Exactly. What do you think sets Canard apart in the, in a Queen's Grill suite from perhaps some of the other luxury cruise offerings out there? For what I have seen, it it is kind of the atmosphere. Right. All of the luxury products have you know, really good right. service, I think. But they, this just had a, they don't, not not all of them have a British pub where you can go get a plowman's for lunch. Um, they, those kinds of things. And they all have good entertainment. And I think um, there's also less orientation to outdoor pool activities. Right. It's, that's, that's not very important. Yeah. For them, it's there, but it's not primary. And some of the other luxury products, that's the key part of their element is the is the outdoor environment as well. Yeah. All the pools, you know, they it's, again, elegance. The pools have nice, thick, cushioned chase lounges. And, and I, that's everybody's pool. That's not just a sweet yeah. pool. It's just a, a upper end yeah. experience. So what everybody. I'm hearing is atmosphere. And for those folks that are really looking to experience what cruising was like in the heyday of the transatlantic chronic crossings mm -hmm. back in the 50s and 60s, this is where you're yep. going to find it. Absolutely. Yeah. The only place yeah. you're going to find it. Wow. The other thing I loved is most of the new cruise ships, they do not have a real promenade deck. You can't walk the promenade yeah. deck. No. Beautiful. Every day we walk the promenade deck. And I just love that because, you know, you can, other ships, you can walk on the yeah. top, but it's windier. And, yeah. and the promenade deck is just, I was like, oh, I miss the promenade deck. I wish every ship had it. Once again, hearkening back to the, that wonderful history, promenading. Yeah. Right? Well, folks, this is absolutely fantastic information. This is, is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? I, I'm trying to convince Rich that he needs to give a transatlantic crossing a try. But we'll see how that goes. And if folks wanted to reach out to either one of you, about a cruise in Canard or another cruise vacation? How would they do that? Well, just give us a call at 425-487-4001. Go to our website and send us a message or email us at info at luxuriant.com and we'll get back to you right away. Perfect, perfect. I'll leave that contact information in the description. But just before we go, I understand that we're breaking in a new cruise dog. And I have to know where you guys are off to next. There it comes. Well, as you can see, I've got a cruise know. cat. <laughs> we didn't know we were doing this one. So, but our big plans are we're trying to put together an African South adventure. Africa. Uh, safari, yes. South Africa and yeah. Botswana. That, that, that sounds like a fantastic excursion. We're going to have to have you back to regale us with your adventures in Africa. With that, I'm just going to wish the, the two of you safe and happy travels and on all your future cruises and adventures. May the wind always be at your back, and I hope to see you on the promenade deck of a canard ship sometime soon in the future. Sounds great. Take care. Right. And that about wraps things up for today, folks. A very special thanks to my guests, Rich and Linda Skinner of Cruise Holidays of Woodenville. If you'd like to reach out to Rich or Linda about a cruise vacation, I will leave their contact information in the description. If you'd like to reach us with a question or a suggestion for a future video, simply send a question to questions at realtravelexperts.com, visit our website, realtravelexperts.com, or simply leave a comment. We always respond. And as always, folks, if you enjoyed this content, a like, subscribe, and a ring of the bell is certainly appreciated. 
and helps us to spread the word. So until next time, happy travels.